everybody. Good morning. It's Cindy Bishop with Cindy Bishop Worldwide, and today we are in for a treat. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. So I'm wondering if you've ever wondered why some video content and why some video speakers can keep you listening. You know, any, any, we've all had good training. We've all had bad training, but think about the speakers that have kept you paying attention. And we've had plenty of them where they've put us to sleep or caused us to click out, even if it is a topic that they're interested in. This is Dave Redenbaugh today, and he's our internet marketing coach and uh, does social media. He's very good. And he's going to demystify charisma and good video technique for us today. He's going to give us lots of practical ideas that we can immediately put to work when we click record on our phones and or your computer uh, cameras today. Welcome. Awesome. And looking hey. forward and sounding your best on your marketing video. Sorry, I beeped out there for a minute. That's okay. Good. So, hey, welcome everybody, you guys. I am really excited about this topic. This is a fun one. Um, I have to tell you, it's a little intimidating preparing for something like this, looking and sounding your best on video. But, but it really is an important thing because of the fact that, like Cindy was talking about, we're, we're in a time, you guys, and hopefully everybody's been able to start taking advantage of things like virtual you know, online meetings and those types of things using Zoom, Google Meet, whatever you're using, um, and learning that in that whole process that really it's, it's, it's video. It's live video is basically what we're talking about. So, you, you know, hopefully this has helped some of, the, some of the, the cautions and some of the fears that people have had in the past about and the intimidation of, of that you need to overcome some of those things about video and how it works and how effective it really can be. So as we do this, you guys, let me kind of walk through what I'm going to be doing is just some basics on some of these, these, these topics that I'm talking about, the looking and sounding good on video. So here's our agenda. Here's what we're going to be covering. First of all, we're going to be talk, talking about things like how to look like a pro. What are the things that you need to be aware of in a video environment to be able to, to, to look and act like a professional, okay? Part of it is your emotional appearance, okay? So getting your mind and your emotions right for video. Um, I have to tell you, in fact, I will share this with you guys. It's not on the notes. You might want to write this down. My wife is a kindergarten teacher, and she has to get herself up for every single virtual class that she does throughout the entire week. One of the things that she plays, and some of you may be familiar with Mandisa. She was a lady that was on American Idol probably eight, 10 years ago, has turned it into an incredible career. She has a video, a YouTube video, Mandisa, called Good Morning. And if it doesn't get you jacked up, excited, ready to go for the day, nothing will. So anyway, just something to think about is that when you're getting ready for these things, you want to be prepared emotionally and make sure that that you know that you're ready for it. You're mostly you're ready for it. Second thing is is your clothing. We're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about things like hair and makeup. You know, I don't have to worry about that too much. But there are some people on this video that 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 those are important. Um, things like lighting. Another one that we're going to hit on you guys is this whole idea of framing. You know, how how do you frame the, what you're doing so that it looks proper, that it looks good, that you're not you know. Um, that the video is going to look right, okay? And again, that's what we're talking about is looking like a pro. The second one is sounding like a pro. That's important as well. So we're going to talk about things like simple basic voice stuff, okay? Voice pacing. Um, talk, we're going to talk about using microphones and, and possibly even give you some ideas. I've got some ideas as far as ones I use. Right now, what I'm using, some of you guys have seen some of the other videos that I've done, some of these other Zoom meetings that I've had. Uh, my headset. I'm not using my headset today. Um, I'm using um, a lapel mic, okay, because in a video, that's probably a lot more professional, okay, not having the, the earphones and stuff over, over, uh, over your head. Uh, another one we're going to talk about is distractions, those, and those distractions come whether they're visual, looking like a pro, or sounding like a pro, okay. Then the last part that we're going to hit on is just a couple of professional practices, things like the technology, the connection that you have, the kind of connection that you have when you're doing a virtual meeting, okay? 
Um, things like personalizing it. How do you personalize a video, okay? Um, and the next one is um, perfection. And we're gonna, we're gonna hit on that. And the last one, you guys, is pretending. Learning how to do this, practicing, doing it right, being able to do the things that you need to and, and to get better at this. And some things, just some ideas that, that I will share with you guys that will help you with getting, getting prepared to make this the very best experience that you can for those people that you, are, that you want to attract as your audience. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Hopefully you guys will enjoy my screens. I got some really cool pictures that are showing up on here. Okay, first one we're gonna talk about then, like I said, is we're gonna talk about looking like a professional. The emotional appearance. The really key part of this, you guys, is being yourself and being your very best self, you know? Um, that, I don't know if there's really much more that can be said about that, but it really is, you guys, is that if, you, if you're not being authentic and genuine, people are going to be a lot less likely to trust you, okay? The next thing is countenance, okay? What I mean by that is things like smiling and, again, being yourself. Uh, the, the next part is energy. And you guys can kind of tell. A lot of times what I try to do is my, my energy level that I try to portray when I'm, when I'm doing video is I want to make sure that I kicked it up a notch or two maybe like five times. And because the reality is, is unless you have energy, unless you have passion, that's not gonna come across. So the next thing is you really need to be excited about your topic, okay? Sometimes we get, you know, especially if it's something that you're doing over and over and over again, you know, you wanna, you wanna make sure that, that it's a topic that is something that you genuinely have an interest in that you genuinely have a passion about, and that you know it's important for people to be able to know what it is that you're talking about, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're, that you're positive about it and that you're excited about the topic that you're gonna be covering. Okay? The next one is be an authority with an important message to share. That's just pretty simple, you guys, pretty basic, but I think it's important to recognize. And that's the thing is a lot of times, our, our, you know, most of us will, will say, our, my greatest enemy is me. You know, you need to be able to overcome the me that stands in the way of you recognizing the authority that you have in certain areas, the, the, the confidence that you should be able to portray with things that you know about. You know, one of the things that just is amazing to me about real estate agents, as I've gotten to know you guys over the past six and a half years or so working with real estate agents in this environment, is how much you guys know about lots of things. You know, when it has to do with the house, it's, it's incredible. Recognize the fact that you are an authority, that you have something important to share that people want to hear, okay? So another one is keep good eye contact with your audience. And that's something I'm really trying to focus in on right now, especially in Zoom meetings. One of the things that's easy to do, you guys, is right now it'd be real easy for me to look at this lineup of the people that are on video and concentrate on that on my computer screen rather than looking to you. You need to establish eye contact. My eye contact is not my computer screen, you guys. My eye contact is above it, okay? So it's important to make sure that you're maintaining that. Um, the other thing, and this is an important note that I have on there, that your front-facing phone camera, so when you're in selfie mode, the camera is right in the middle of the phone, okay? So you want to look directly at the screen. But when you're on your computer, um, you recognize the fact that most laptops, most desktops with the camera that's installed on those, those computers, they are just above the, the, the screen itself. So you want to recognize that. Okay. So those are a couple of those things. Uh, the other one is, and I'm not doing it right now, you guys, is minimize your gestures. Too often we block with our hands. Okay. So a lot of times that can be a little bit distracting. So um, it's something that honestly I need to concentrate on making sure that I'm kind of hold, fold my hands in front of me and not distracting people with the, the gestures. So make sure that you're doing that as well. You guys, you don't want, you don't want anything to be distracting. All right. All right. Next one. Let's talk about clothing. All right. So you want to make sure that you are professional, but don't overdo it. You know, I've got a, a shirt with a, with a collar 
nothing fancy. Ladies, a blouse, a nice blouse, a nice professional blouse. If I'm, but a, a jacket, a tie, some of those things, that's not really necessary, you guys, in, the, in, in, in any kind of video that you might be doing. There, there are people that I watch, these, some of these YouTube channels that, that I've become, you, you, they're my mentors online. They really are. And there's some of these people that, I mean, it's, it's relatively casual. They never overdress, but it's always, it, it's always good appearance. They look nice. They look sharp, but they don't, they don't overdo it. So you really want to be careful with that. The other thing you guys, especially, I mean, ladies, guys, we don't have to worry about it as much necessarily. I don't have a lot of jewelry that I use, but you want to make sure that any jewelry that you, that you're wearing is not going to be distracting. Okay. Um, so you wouldn't want to have earrings that are dangling down and banging on your neck and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that may look really good in a glamorous evening, but you know what, for video, not going to be as good. So you want to make sure that most of the stuff that you do, you keep it classy, simple, and really kind of understated. If that makes some sense. I'm sure it does. Okay. Hair and makeup, be presentable. That's the thing, you guys. Be careful not to overdo it. That's the thing. I'm, again, I'm not going to overdo my makeup, but Sometimes, ladies, you know, you need to be careful. You want to make sure that you don't overdo your makeup. You want to make sure that you have something that, that is just, again, it's understated. One of the things that I heard that was really a key part, you know, and again, when, I, when I'm listening to these things and I'm making sure that I'm prepared for, these, for this type of training, you guys, I, make, I do some research, you know. One of, the, one of the people that I saw that was, re that was really interesting, she's actually a uh, her her uh, background was in broadcast, okay? And what she talked about is that in video, when people are on camera, when we're watching it, what we're focused on is a person's eyes and their mouth, okay? So if that gives you some help with the way that you understate your makeup and where you might pay attention to it, that's probably a good way to do it, is to focus in on, on your eyes and your mouth, okay? So keep it simple. Um, the next one, looking like a pro is lighting, okay? Now, I will tell you, the very best lighting options that we have are natural light. Right now, I'm not using natural light, okay? And I will tell you, it's not necessarily to use it as an excuse, but there's not good windows in my house that don't have furniture in the way. So I would almost have to rearrange my furniture. So what I use is I use some, I, I use, you know, some, some lighting, okay? The, the key thing to know about this, first of all, natural light is going to be the very best. And when you're using natural light, you wanna recognize the fact that the best natural light is gonna be that light that you're looking into. So make sure that, that you don't have windows necessarily that are distracting that where it would be behind you and that's where the natural light's coming from. Make sure that you are facing the natural light, okay? So even when you're using something like, like what I've got, I've got these, these other lamps and things like that that I use to kind of focus in on, on, on having this, uh, having good lighting is um, to recognize another thing too, and like it says in here, you guys, is that your computer screen has a bluish light that, that can make your face appear kind of ghostly, really. You know, it really can. So that you want to be careful of that. The other thing then, like I said, is the lamps that I use basically are just simple, you know, house lamps, you know, uh, desk lamps, things like that, that literally what, what it is is to make sure that they're at eye level, okay? And that's a, that's a really key part of this thing as far as the lighting part, okay? So be on, the other thing you want to be careful of, you guys, is make sure that you're, you're watching out for backlighting. You want to make sure that, that the light that comes from the back is not going to be ca casting a shadow on the front of your face, okay? That's the thing you want to be careful of. So um, the other one to, to be careful of, you guys, is to recognize, like I said, with these lights, this artificial light that I'm using, it's pretty much eye level or just a little bit above, okay? So that's a really key part of this, you guys. If you have light from above, like if you have a, a really nice light in the room, like I've got one right up above me. I don't use that because it casts a shadow on my whole entire, on the bottom part of my face and on my eyes, makes my face look a little bit shallow, things like that. So you want to be careful. The key part about this, you guys, is testing it, using your phone, going to those places in your house where you might have some good natural light, 
or you might be able to set up your, your phone or whatever camera you're gonna be using, your laptop, that type of thing. You wanna make sure that you're, you're testing it against this, those, those different environments inside your home so that you can get the very best, most attractive light that you can. So, all right. Here's the next part that I wanna get into then, you guys, and this is the part that, that we're, where we're talking about framing, okay? A key part that you wanna be careful of is make sure that there's not too much space above your head, okay? That can be distracting. That, 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 it could be distracting if there's, if there's stuff going on on the, on the ceiling and things like that, that that might be distracting. So you wanna make sure that you fill up, you know, the, from the top of your head down, that you're filling up the, that, that space, okay? That's a really key thing. Because again, a big part of this, you guys, especially since we're coming from our homes, you know, there's, there's things that, you know, it, it makes it very personal. So the part that we wanna make sure of though, is we don't want anything to be a distraction. You want to be able to focus that, that whoever you're talking with, whether it's one person or it's a couple of hundred, you wanna make sure that, they're able to keep their focus on you and not be distracted by any other you know, things around you. So the framing part of it is really important. The other part too, you guys, is, is what, where I talk about here, eye level, okay? So um, you wanna make sure that your, your camera is at eye level. One of the most unflattering ways that you can do this is if your camera is pointing up. So if, you have, if, you're, if your laptop is a little bit too low, Okay, and that camera is pointing up at you, that can be some, probably the most unflattering position you can have a camera in. So you wanna make sure that your camera is at eye level. At worst case, like it says here, if you err, go slightly above eye level is okay. But either shooting way, way down or way up is not, gonna, is not gonna be as flattering, you guys. So you wanna be careful with those types of things. The other one too is you wanna keep your camera at about arm's distance. All right, that, that makes it so that, you know, your, your face isn't right in their face, you know, but they're able, so again, that can be distracting as well. You wanna make sure that you keep yourself at about an arm's distance from your camera, okay? Um, the next one, when you're using your phone as your camera, okay, you wanna make sure that you're keeping it in horizontal mode and not vertical, okay? Um, Sometimes that's, that's something that, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people are shooting selfies, you know, with the vertical positioning, all that kind of stuff. The bottom line is, is when you're shooting video, you're gonna get your best um, image on a screen when you're doing it in a horizontal mode, okay? When you're, when you're talking about video. So again, these are just some real simple practical tips, you guys, but they're really important, okay? They really are. Um, the next one is do a background check. Do a check behind you, you know? Um, you wanna make sure, and I'm sure some of you guys, it's pretty funny, but there's, there's been some, some of these Zoom meetings and there's getting to be some, some pretty funny YouTube videos with people that aren't paying attention to things that are going on in their background with these Zoom meetings. You know, like the, the poor lady who's in the middle of a, an important Zoom meeting and her husband's coming out in his underwear. You want to be careful that you are paying attention to anything in the background that could be a distraction. You know, animals coming in, kids coming in, husbands, wives coming in, you know, not properly clothed, all that kind of stuff. So those can all be distractions to people in your meeting. But you want to be careful of that, you guys. So that's the other thing that's interesting about this is to recognize that sometimes smaller rooms are the best ones to be shooting in, okay? Because the sound is going to not, the sound is gonna be much better contained, okay? But the other thing too, you guys, is the fact that, that you don't have as many distractions that you have to worry about visually. So make sure you're checking the background. All right, now we're gonna move into sound, which visual, basically what you guys have is you have visual and you have the auditory. Okay, so you have sound. You wanna be able to sound like a professional when you're doing this. So sound better and you're gonna look better, all right? One of the things that, that you wanna make sure that you're doing is using your very best voice, okay? And sometimes you need to train yourself to do that. There are times when um, 
you know, if you're, if you're speaking at a really high spot, what you find is that you're basically speaking through your head. If you're down too low, you're speaking through your throat, okay? So you want to avoid that. Basically, the, your best voice comes directly right out of your mouth, okay? So you want to make sure that you're taking, taking time to, to, to concentrate on that. Uh, and one of the ways to do that, you guys, for some of you that maybe have taken choir in your past, you probably remember doing trills. <laughs> Not a lot of fun, <clears throat> that whole thing. But that's a really good way to find your natural voice. And you, that's what you want to do is you want to find your natural voice. That's where your voice is most comfortable. It's not straining. And you want to be able to just, just, you know, like I said, find it with your, with trills. And then the other thing to keep in mind, you guys, is to recognize that sometimes what we do and we get excited, it's like we're blowing the air right out of our mouth. And, at, and when we're talking, don't want to do that. You want, to, you want to consider that whole idea with your diaphragm and recognizing that it's like an accordion. You want to just make sure that it's kind of just slowly taking your words and being able to get them out at a very even way, okay? So enough of that stuff. Um, the next part to talk about, you guys, is pacing. And when we get excited, and one of the things that we tend to do um, is we tend to talk way too fast. So what you really have to be able to do is concentrate on and consider pacing so that it's, you're taking time to slow down, okay? So if you're one of those people that tends to talk fast, then you want to just make sure that you concentrate on talking a little bit slower and pacing yourself so that people can, can recognize what it is that you're saying and the importance of the words that you want to be able to convey, that you're communicating properly. Okay, next part, microphones. Now, if you're using your phone, okay, it has a microphone on it. If you're using your laptop, it has a microphone on it. The problem is, a lot of times, you guys, is that when you're using either one of those devices, those microphones have a space, like we said, arm's length from the camera, right? That means an arm's length from the sound. So there, there's some space in between you and that, that microphone on that device that is it's going to cause some problems. It could be some issues. There, there could be some, you know, some, some computer noises. There could be some other things. But, but the biggest thing is, is that space is not going, to, not going to get your very best voice. So, like I said, what I'm using, hopefully you can see it now, but it's a, it's a lapel mic, okay? Um, real simple one. Cost me, I think, 25 bucks on Amazon. So, they're real inexpensive. Mine is a wired one. So, mine basically, you know, I plug it directly into my computer. OK, um, but it picks up my sound. It comes across and it comes across a lot better because that sound is right here. Right. So it's it's a lot. It's a lot crisper. It's it, people are not missing the, the communication. They're not missing the message when, when you're able to get the sound right. OK. Now, the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you also do a background check here. What what are the potential um, noises that could be a distraction? I just told you a little bit a little bit ago. Every single morning, I mean, this is kind of interesting. My wife and I are, you know, we're, we're on different Zoom meetings. You know, she, she's doing her Zoom meeting with her kindergartners. And believe me, it's pretty exciting and it's fun and it's loud. So I need to close the door. So I need to do things like close the door. The other thing that I had to do was mute my phone. I wanted to make sure that my phone was not going to be a distraction in the middle of this presentation. Okay. So you want to make sure that you take care of those kinds of things. All right. So. These are just a couple of professional practices that you want to kind of consider, all right? Uh, one of them is your connection, all right? So knowing that a lot of you are going to be doing these meetings using, uh, using these, these um, programs like Zoom or, um, you know, Join Me or Google Meet or, you know, any of these others, Go to Meeting, any of these other these other platforms that, that are become so popular today. But the bottom line is, is that you want to make sure that you've got a good Wi-Fi connection. All right. Now, mine, I know this is the best connection that I have because I'm using my computer here. My computer is hardwired into, into my router. Okay. So I'm going to have my very best connection right here. 
But if I'm using my phone in another part of my house or I'm going outside, those types of things, I wanna make sure that I've checked the Wi-Fi connection. Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on that, you guys, this is one of those things you'll probably have to Google, but there are apps, depending on if you have an Apple or an Android, there are different ones for each one, but look for um, Wi-Fi, check Wi-Fi connection. Okay, look for apps that are gonna be able to give you that. And it's basically a tool that you open it up. Uh, the, the one on, on Android is just called Wi-Fi connection. And literally I open it up and I can walk around the house and I can tell where the, the connection is gonna be weak or strong. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you've got a good strong connection. The other thing you wanna be mindful of folks, especially for those of you that have a, a number of people in your home, you know, you've got, maybe you've got kids that are, that are, that are doing virtual learning as well. Um, you have, you know, spouses that are whatever they're doing. Maybe they're, they're, they're going, to, going to work on their computer or something on those devices. You want to make sure that, that you are still able to maintain a good connection with wherever it is that you're conducting your meeting. Okay, so that, enough said about that, but it's an important one to just kind of check it. Check and make sure that you're not going to be having a situation where you're you're fading in and out. You know, your voice is not connecting or it's, it's, it's a weak connection. So you want to make sure you've done that. The next thing, you guys, is to personalize it. Okay. Um, literally, what that what I mean by that is you want to consider the fact that what you're doing is you're having a conversation with one of your best friends. Um, sometimes if you have a difficult time with doing that. One of the things that, that I've heard is the suggestion, and I like it, it's a really good one, is take a pic, get, have a picture of one of your best friends, the people that, that you like having conversations with, and just put them right there on your computer. You know, makes it real easy. And then you can focus in on just talking directly to that person, somebody who's a friend, somebody that's a confidant, somebody who trusts you, likes you, those types of things. It makes, it, it gives you the ability to personalize your message so that, and people are going to buy that a lot better. You know, people will buy your message. They're going to recognize the importance of what they're hearing when you deliver to them, when you've personalized it. And they, they, they know that you care about them the way that you're uh, communicating. Okay. The next one is perfection. It doesn't exist, folks. And that's the big part about the reason I even have that point in the slide. Don't worry about being perfect. You're not going to be. Guess what? There are 5 billion videos that are viewed every single day on YouTube. And I bet out of those 5 billion, there's probably not any of them that are perfect. You know what I'm saying? So just get over it. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes. Don't worry about it. No big deal. Here's, here's the last part that I, point that I wanted to make with this, though, you guys, is to be able to pretend. Okay? Here's what I mean by that. Is Consider the fact that I know that a lot of you guys have probably been spending a lot more time maybe watching videos on YouTube, doing some other training, different things like that, things that you're finding that are interesting. And you watch people, and it's like Cindy, in, in her introduction, she talked about the fact that, you know, that there are people that you get, you watch their videos, and you get engaged with it, and you really like them. There are some people that could be talking about the exact same topic that you'll click them out in, a, in an instant. because they're, they're not really engaging. They're not, they're not, maybe they're not entertaining. Maybe they're not inspiring. Maybe they're not, you know, whatever it is, you guys, but to recognize the fact that what you want to be able to do is think about those people that you like, that you like watching that, you know, whether it's on television, whether it's on YouTube, wherever it is, but with people that are on camera that you like and trust, consider mimicking some of those same kinds of things, being able to kind of practice as you practice to be able to mimic some of those same kinds of, uh, the way that they use their voice, the way that they use inflection, the way that they use their background and whatever. You know, I mean, one of the things I think all of us are seeing is, <laughs> it's kind of interesting to me, is how television has basically become Zoom meetings. <laughs> you know, it really has. It's been these little captured things and people, you know, Jimmy Kimmel in his house, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, you want to be able to, uh, recognize the fact that, and again, they're not perfect, but see what they're doing, see how they're doing it, and, and consider mimicking those types of things. The other thing to consider, you guys, is really to practice. Take time to practice. Do these things where you're just talking, you're giving your presentation, and you're giving it to yourself. 
you're, you're practicing, you're recording the video, you're playing it back and you're watching and going, okay, I need to do this different, I need to sound different here, I need to check my whatever, my sound, my, my camera, whatever it is, you guys. So, uh, but anyway, those are some basic principles, you guys. Uh, hopefully this has been um, effective for you, that you've been able to get some good information from this and that this is, this is gonna be something that you're gonna be able to use like, even Susan was talking about today. She's got she's got her Zoom meeting today that she's going to be doing with an initial meeting with the buyer. Hopefully, this is something that you can be able to take these these things that we've been able to talk about this morning that I've been able to share with you guys and start using them right now today with your own video marketing. So let me go ahead and open this up for any questions that you guys might have. Uh, I'm looking. Let me see here. Do I have any questions coming in on the chat box? Thanks, Dave. You're welcome, Susan. Good. All right. We are good. Excellent presentation, Dave. Just excellent. And tomorrow we have LinkedIn, um, but this is wonderful, um, and I really appreciate it a lot, and I think everybody else does, too. Good. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you being here. All righty. Take this care. Fun. Yep. All right. Bye.